That, Devon, was Senator Lewis Morton. Did you see the look on his face when I told him the captain opened his letter? Pure agony. Was it really necessary to tell him that? He would have found out sooner or later anyway. People have a hard time adjusting to life outside the capital. On the open sea, the rules tend to change, but customs don't change with them. Mr. Morton is a prime example of that, and you will probably experience the same. The trick, though, is to accept change. It's something that people like Morton will never understand. But you might. What makes you believe I will? There's a reason I picked you from the lot. I rarely choose anybody who is unfit for a life at sea. Now for your tour. Welcome aboard his lordship's vessel, Herald. A Cromwellian class protectorate clipper launched in 1851. As one of the fastest sailing ships in the mercantile fleet, she can reach a top speed of 18 knots. During her short life, she has already set multiple records sailing to the colonies and back along the famous Indigo route. What records did she break? Several speed records, of which the most important one was the race against the David class clipper HLV Crowing. The Herald beat her by three days on a return voyage from the colonies to the capital. She set a record time of 78 days, 5 hours and 16 minutes. Now let's move on to the deck house. The Cromwellian class ship type is named after one of the Protectorate's founding fathers, Oliver Cromwell. These ships are merchant clippers, built with trade in mind. Making money is their sole purpose. The Herald is an indigo clipper, which means she mainly takes shipments of indigo powder to the Protectorate homeland. With this powder, we make the paint that coats the hulls of our ships and the dye that gives the fabric of our clothes its bright blue hue. I don't really get it. Why is blue paint so important? You've lived in the capital, Devon. Never noticed the rooftops of its buildings or the clothes of its people? Everything has been coloured blue there. The colour blue touches on much that the protectorate holds dear. An indigo is made from a plant that produces the only known blue dye that withstands heavy wear. Until anybody finds a cheaper substitute, the indigo trade remains an invaluable part of our economy. I never really thought about blue dye in that way. Sounds like a huge undertaking. It is, but that's not without reason. After all, the Protectorate is built upon free market principles that foster progress through supply and demand. Its people get paid an equal share for the work they do, and with this money they are free to do with as they wish. I am not fond of life on shore, but even I can see that the system works. For most people, at least. Now, on to the bow of the ship. We are standing on the weather deck right now where you will work every day ensuring the safe passage to the colonies. You will be tasked with tying the knots, reefing the sails, 
and swabbing the decks. There will be no talking to first-class passengers, no idling around the ship at night, no begging, no fighting, no stealing, and most of all, don't get caught trespassing. Now that sounds like a lot for you to worry about, right? I'll manage. That's what I thought. Don't worry, it'll get tedious soon enough. Keep in mind that the dining saloon in the deck house is only for first class passengers and officers during this trip. This was a special request by Senator Morton, so please steer clear from the saloon if you want to keep out of trouble. Anyone without a blue coat should just use the service stairs through this door here. Now, is there anything in particular you would like to know? Why is the deck house reserved for passengers and officers? Customs, Devon. It is meant to make you work hard so one day you earn yourself a blue coat too. Were it not for the presence of Mr. Morton though, this rule would not be so strongly enforced by the captain. Now just go through this door, past the officer's cabins, and you'll find the service stairs on your right hand side. Down those stairs you'll find the crew's quarters and your bed. That concludes the tour, Devon. I hope you enjoyed it. I will have to stay out here. I'm on watch tonight. The boatswain will wake you up tomorrow morning to prepare you for the day. Good night. But I don't want to. And take this thing back. But Ian, it's a gift. I don't need it. I don't need any of this, I... 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 Get out. I didn't mean to... Get out. I was quite surprised to find a flag in the drawer. I'm sure it would not have pleased the Lord Protector to see our symbol of power tucked away in a nightstand. It was a peculiar place for a sink. I suspect it didn't fit in the officers' cabins. God forbid that officers have to use the same one as the rest of us. The barrels were filled with rum. I wouldn't be surprised if they were placed there on special request. I wondered if everything was all right inside. Go away, Ian. If you want to apologize for the compass, then now is not the right time. Excuse me, sir. My name's Devon Rensberg. I overheard the argument just now, and I wondered if everything was all right. Rupert Brunswick, first officer and navigator. Nice to meet you, Rensberg. Welcome aboard. I'm sorry for my tone. I didn't mean to be rude. I do appreciate your concern. Do you want to tell me what happened, sir? Doesn't matter. I'm fine now. But let me give you some expert advice, dear boy. Be careful whom you trust on board. Some people might not be worthy of your friendship. Keeping to yourself will save you from disappointment. Now, off to bed. It's very late. It was getting late. I had to go to bed.
A risque pin-up poster hung tucked between two opposing walls. It tried to sell the colonies on some sort of exotic fantasy. I have to admit that its delusions were once mine. I know you are out there, and even though Mother taught me to address you properly, I know your language is different from ours. Please, hear my prayer. Listen to my heart. I'm begging you to just help me this one time. I want you to see my struggle with the life you chose for me. I feel trapped and I see no way out. You are the only one I can turn to. Please tell me what to do. Give me a sign. Boxes, big and small, were everywhere on the Herald. I wondered what was inside the one on the table, but I didn't dare to open it. On the table stood an open bottle of wine, and there it remained for the rest of the voyage. Maybe I should have taken it to the galley to be used as vinegar. The playing cards, strewn everywhere, seemed to indicate that the sailors liked to play games, I preferred to write in my journal rather than occupying myself with such silly things. The apples reminded me of home. Looking out of the window of my small room, I used to dream about this journey while staring at the fruit trees in the garden. Few people on land know about the strict rules in the Navy. Being a sailor requires discipline and a great deal of respect for authority. I'll admit I did consider trying on the blue coat, but the chance of someone noticing was too high. Most books I found in the crew quarters were racy accounts of comical adventures, so it was quite surprising to me that my crewmate Arthur was reading works by Chaucer. It was getting late. I had to go to bed, 